Okay, so this video is going to be on organic molecules, carbon-based molecules. So let's go ahead and get started. So as I said a moment ago, organic molecules are carbon-based. So carbon is the building block of organic molecules. And there's four categories of organic molecules. Carbohydrates, you know, fruits are high in carbohydrates. Lipids, you know, the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer and it's uh, it's made from a double layer of lipids. You know, eggs, eggs are high in proteins. Proteins are a category of organic molecule and then nucleic acids such as DNA. So these are the four categories of organic molecules. Now I have a separate video on each of them if you wanna go over the basic features of each. This video, however, is gonna mainly focus on carbon. So when we look at carbon, you know, carbon is unique. And, you know, before I go over why carbon is unique, let's look at the square from the periodic table. I see the atomic number six means it has six protons, and that also means it's got six electrons. Now, the 12 does not mean it has 12 neutrons. It's got six neutrons because the 12, the atomic mass, is when you add up the protons plus the neutrons. So six protons plus what mystery number equals 12? Well, that would be six. Well, in the nucleus of atoms, you find the protons and the neutrons. Therefore, the electrons are orbiting in these levels, these electron levels. And you might know the first electron level can carry two electrons. After that, it's considered filled and stable. That means carbon's four remaining electrons must be in the second electron level. So notice how the first electron level is filled, completely filled with two electrons. We call it stable. But the second electron level is not filled. It's unstable. It only has four electrons, but eight are required to make the second electron level stable. So this is why carbon is unique. It will bond up to four times, and by doing so, it makes these rather large, complex organic molecules. So carbon is going to actually, carbon's figured out a way to obtain a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and an eighth, ele eighth electron from other atoms in order to become stable. And this explains why there's such a wide array of organic carbon-based molecules. Now, when we talk about organic molecules, we want to talk about their monomers. The monomers are the building blocks. Monomers are small, or small carbon-based organic molecules. Now, ultimately, you might know there are four categories of organic molecules. There are proteins, and there are nucleic acids, and there are carbohydrates, and there are lipids. And each of these are made from small building blocks called monomers. So here's a small building block. Here's a monomer. And when a bunch of monomers join and bond together, they make a larger chain called a polymer. Polymers are larger chains of monomers. Polymers are complex carbon-based molecules. Now, we're going to go over each of them, each of the four kinds, in just a moment. So when we look at monomers, first of all, proteins. The category called proteins are made from building blocks, small monomers called amino acids. So there's an amino acid. And when a bunch of amino acids bond together, these amino acids form what's called a polypeptide. And that's the polymer of a protein. Now, the polypeptide will twist and fold into a final, uh, final protein. And that is all discussed in uh, my separate video specifically related to proteins. Now, there's another category called nucleic acids. Well, nucleic acids are, are made from a building block called a nucleotide. So here's a nucleotide. And when a bunch of nucleotides bond together, these, this long chain of nucleotides makes up the polymer called a nucleic acid. Well, here's another monomer called a monosaccharide. You know, monosaccharides, uh, saccharide simply means sugar, and mono means one. So here's one sugar. But when a monosaccharide bonds with a bunch of other monosaccharides, it creates a polysaccharide. And, and these are the monomers and polymers of carbohydrates. Now, lipids are a little more tricky because there's actually two monomers. Lipids are made from 
a long chain called a fatty acid and then a molecule called glycerol and when uh, a glycerol bonds with several fatty acids this makes up a lipid now again I have videos on each of these but I hope you see the point that organic molecules are made from small building blocks called monomers and those monomers are built up into polymers and what all of these have in common is they're all built around carbon because they are after all organic now I want to show you you know how these atoms kind of bond together using a pretty simple example methane CH4 methane is made from carbon and hydrogen so look on the left in blue is carbon stable I hope you see no it's not stable as we said earlier it only has four electrons in the second level it needs four more how about in red hydrogen on the right is hydrogen stable with its one electron in the first level no it needs one more electron to become stable because two electrons are what fills up that first electron level so what do atoms do when they are unstable well they bond to form molecules so let's look at methane methane is CH4 so there's actually one two three four hydrogens that will bond to this carbon in order to form this molecule called methane and if we focus on the top hydrogen notice how the electrons overlap and are shared this is an example of a covalent bond so the one electron in red that hydrogen normally possesses and by borrowing the electron in blue the hydrogen on top has become stable it's it's obtained two electrons same with the hydrogen on the right it has its own electron in red and it's borrowing an electron in blue from carbon so the hydrogen on the right is also stable same with the hydrogen at the bottom it has its own electron in red and it's sharing and borrowing a blue electron from carbon it too is stable and of course the same thing goes for the hydrogen on the left it has its own electron in red and it's sharing a blue electron from carbon it too is stable now what about that carb the blue carbon in the middle the blue carbon in the middle is also stable because it has its four electrons in the second level in blue and it's also borrowing the electrons from hydrogen and so it has figured out a way to obtain uh, to fill its electron levels and become stable and this is a great example of a covalent, covalent a molecule that is connected by covalent bonds now there's a little bit of a problem when it comes to drawing these dot diagrams you know the dots representing the electrons they're a little time consuming so you will very often see this done instead notice how the dashes are representing the bonds between the carbon and the hydrogen so notice that one dash is equivalent to two electrons here's another one notice how one dash is equivalent to two electrons so these dash diagrams are just simpler and uh, easier to read and they're just less time consuming to draw and again here's another example here's a, a molecule CF4 you could take the time to do all the dots draw all the dots if you like or you could simply do this again notice that every single dash represents two electrons and so because carbon can bond up to four times very complex molecules can be created now here's methane again and notice how you have all single dashes these are called single bonds so if we focus on the carbon notice how there are four dashes associated with the carbon in the middle well one dash is equivalent to two electrons so four dashes would be eight electrons notice how that carbon in the middle is stable here's a more complex carbon based molecule here now of all the carbons you see let's just pick one let's pick that carbon right there notice how there are four dashes coming off of that carbon well four dashes represents eight electrons notice how that carbon and all the other carbons are stable well what about this you see these double dashes almost looks like an equal sign well these are called double bonds these are sharing two sets of electrons so pick any carbon of those four let's pick the one on the far right notice how there are four dashes attached to the carbon on the right 
1 dash equals 2 electrons, so 4 dashes equals 8 electrons. This carbon and all the other carbons are stable. Well, here's a triple bond. Three dashes is what we call a triple bond. These are very, very strong bonds. And pick a carbon, either the one on the left or one on the right. Let's pick, take the one on the left. Notice how there are four dashes attached to the carbon on the left. That equals eight electrons. The carbon is stable. And uh, carbon will also form these ring structures. And again, you can pick any carbon out of this chain here, any carbon out of the ring, excuse me. Let's pick that carbon right there. Notice how that carbon has four dashes attached to it. Four dashes equals eight electrons. That carbon and all the others are stable. So there you go. There's a quick introduction to carbon and organic-based molecules. Again, I have a separate video on proteins and lipids and amino acids and carbohydrates, but that will hopefully get you started. Uh, you know, leave your comments in the box below, and I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.